It's Tom, Old Man Reefer again. Today I'm going to show you how to two-part dose your 20-gallon Nano Reef. Before I get started, I wanted to thank the new subscribers. I appreciate it. Some say you don't need to two-part dose with a Nano Reef Aquarium because of water change. However, there's a backstory I have to tell you about two-part dosing and whether it's necessary in a 20 gallon a reef aquarium. About 25 years ago, I met Julian Sprung. If you don't know who Julian Sprung is, uh, he among a few others are kind of what I consider uh, the founding reefers, let's say, of what reefing became today. I would highly recommend that you read his first volume. He wrote it with J. Charles Delbeek back in 1992 or three, and it's called The Reef Aquarium, and it's a thick hardcover, and it's what every beginner, intermediate, and even advanced reefer can refer to if need to. Anyway, he was promoting his book uh, in Clifton, New Jersey at a place called Absolutely Fish. I had already purchased the book and went to ha just have him sign it. While I was there, he was also promoting Sea Balance. Sea Balance has been around since the early 90s and he also had that there. It was brand new for him. And I went in, he signed my book, and he said, why don't you try sea balance in your aquarium? And at the time, I only had live rock and some fish. And I said, well, I only have live rock and fish. Would it be necessary? And he said, absolutely. He said it would adjust calcium, magnesium, and strontium ions to natural seawater ratios. And it would promote coralline algae also. So I thought, fine, I'll give it a try. And ever since then, whether I had corals or not, I always added a little bit to my aquariums and it does make a difference. I'm not selling the product at all because I have 15 subscribers, but I do know what works for me and it has worked over the years. Let me show you what I do, uh, a little bit how the two-part dosers work I won't get into too much detail because when you get them, if you choose to dose with an auto dosing system, the directions are pretty straightforward. Uh, you can also dose manually. I did that for years, but I found uh, number one, it's easier. I don't have to mess with it anymore. And number two, uh, you're getting a more consistent quantity and I can spread it out over, right now I'm spreading it out over two times a day. So let me show you how it works. Just trying to keep it interesting here, guys. Okay, as you'll notice, back here, I have my ATO. This is my auto top off, and I thought it was important that you know that it kind of works in conjunction with calcium and alkalinity because I dose calcwasser, and that's in the automatic top off. So. As, I, as water evaporates, I have calcwasser in here. And that goes into the aquarium also. And most of you know that that helps stabilize DKH. It helps precipitate phosphate. And it's great for the aquarium. I can't even imagine not dosing calcwasser in my ATO setup. So here is calcium and alkalinity. The way you want to determine how much you need, guys, it's plain and simple, you have to test. Just before a water change, whatever day of the week you do your water change, you'll test alkalinity. This is Hannah. Calcium, salifert. And I use magnesium, salifert, magnesium. You get those numbers, you've tested before the water change. Then you do your water change and you test again. Give it till the next day. Test again and see what your, your readings are. At that point, you can dose the minimal amount 
of C balance, both part A and B. I believe it says you can do up to maybe one or two mils per day. Uh, the instructions are really straightforward. If you had any questions, leave some comments or questions and I can answer them. You do the minimal dosing uh, for one week. Then at the end of the week, before your water change, you test again. And you see if there's a, a fluctuation. Did it go up? Did it stay the same? Did it go down? If it went up, you know then your consumption isn't taking it out of the water. So at that point, you have to stay at that level. If you haven't added corals yet, that's why. Uh, if you're starting to grow a lot of coralline algae, then you may see at the end of a week it drops down, so you add a little bit more. It's trial and error and test. You really can't screw things up. The only thing you can do is if you add too much, your DKH will go high. Maybe I've gone one time when I was testing, it went to 13 and my calcium was like 460 or 70. So you do a water change and it'll come right back down. I like to use Instant Ocean Reef Crystals. It's got a higher alkalinity and a little bit higher calcium level and magnesium as well. So I've used Reef Crystals uh, for 20 years now. I've never changed. I don't fix things that aren't broken. Once you see that your levels uh, are not fluctuating, your dosing, and each week you test, your levels are the same. Maybe they've gone up a little, so you know the range. You can be from four, over 400 to 450 or 60 with your calcium. You can go high as 10 or 11, preferably I'm around nine, I'm between nine and 10 all the time. And my calcium is around 420, 430, and magnesium is usually around 1300. So uh, you might find yours fluctuating initially, but once you, what they call, dial it in, once you know how much you're using, uh, then you can start using your auto doser. All right, here I am showing you the setup, calcium and alkalinity. Uh, that's the BRS dosers there, their brand. I'm showing you the uh, inlets where it goes into the doser uh, from the container and uh, obviously that's where it goes out and here's just a shot of where it comes into the aquarium so this is your out for both calcium and alkalinity to test it or to what we would call calibrate your doser this is crude but it'll work this is your intake. It goes in through the doser, and this is your out into a measured container. Do this for 10 minutes, so it's going to draw the liquid up, and it's going to come through, and it's going to go down, and it's going to come out at the drop level. Once that starts to happen, once it gets to this end at the drop level, then you start your 10 minute countdown. So however much it draws out, drop by drop into the measured container in 10 minutes, that's your test. That'll be the outcome where you do the math from. The math is easy, guys. Here's a little example. All right, this example shows at 1.1 mil per minute, in 10 minutes, you would dose 11 mils. At 100 minutes, 110 mils. So the math for me, or you, would go if I use 10 mils in 10 minutes, that's one mil every minute. So you can set your timer, and I'll show you that now, you set your timer any way you'd like to dose 10 mils over a period of a day. So what I've done is split 10 mils over twice a day, which is two five-minute dosings. Notice there's two plugs on the timer, one for each doser. I do it at 10 p.m. and at 5 a.m. I run five mils each time.
All right, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you learned something, something you can take away from it so you can start dosing in your nano reef tank. If you have any questions or comments or you might want to make a request on a video, leave that below. If you want to leave a comment about what kind of aquarium and the dosing you're doing in your nano reef tank, feel free to leave that in the comments. The new viewers, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, all that stuff. And once again, have a great day. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. So you can start two-part dosing in your nano aquarium. <laughs> so you can t so you can start two-part dosing in your nano aquarium. So you can